So in order to get uh, calculate the force, the normal force uh, from the boat onto the mast, um, you know, there's a lot of things that we could try to do. Um, one problem that we'd have is if we pick any point on the mast itself to talk about the, um, if we talk, picked any point on the mast as an axis of rotation, um, we wouldn't be able to get any information about this particular force in terms of the, the torques that are being applied. <coughs> now we certainly could talk about um, the, the net forces um, to some extent, but we need to be able to talk about where those are. So let's, um, um, the one thing that, that's, that's pretty slick about this is that we know that um, the force, we want to know the normal force on the mass. Right? We want to know this force right here. Um, and that force is, has a, a Newton's second law pair. So basically whatever force that is acting on this mast has to be equal to the force that the mast acts on the boat. So we're going to use Newton's third law to state that, well, the force on the boat by the mast is equal to the force on the mast by the boat. Right? This is what we really want to know, but we're going to use information about this force in order to figure that out. All right? <coughs> So what we're going to do is we need to pick a, a different axis of rotation um, on our boat. We can pick either this point out here or this point out here. Let's go ahead and pick this one um, on, the, on the right side because that's the one that we already solved for. And, and if we can use something like a thousand newtons, it might just make our calculation a little bit easier. But either point would work perfectly fine. That's the great thing about doing statics problems. Um, so we pick this point to be our axis of rotation. Um, and we're going to write our uh, newtons second law for rotation, the net torque. And I'm going to write this thing, that torque on the ship about the backstay. Right? That is going to be equal to zero. <coughs> and there's a couple of torques that are caused by that. Right? There's, there's a torque. We only consider torques on the boat. We can't consider this normal force. That's a force on the mast. So if we wanted to talk about... If we wanted to write something, some type of Newton's second law of rotation for the mast, we'd need to pick a rotational point, you know, on the mast somewhere. Um, or, or, you know, we could pick it potentially somewhere else, but that would just give us a lot of things that we would be trying to calculate. Um, so, we, that's how we're going to work through this, right? There's lots of potential ways to, to actually solve this. Let me kind of sketch a, a force diagram here that's going to be helpful for us. So, we're picking an axis of rotation about this end. And so we know that there is 4.88 meters to the point where we have this downward force. This is the force on the boat due to the mast. And then we also have another lever arm. This is R to the force day. And we have a force here of 1,000 newtons. This is the force of the force day. And we know what this is too. This is the force on the boat well, this is the thing that we're trying to find, right? We don't actually know what this is. You might be saying, oh, well, that's, that's just the, uh, the due to the, the mass of the, the mast. But the problem is it's not just the mass of the mast, because we also have other forces that are um, <coughs> pulling down on the mast as well. So um, we, we can certainly solve this in other ways, but this, this should be one that, uh, that works just fine. So this lever arm here is 4.88 uh, plus 2.74. Let me see if I can do that in my head quick. 21617. Uh, 7.62. That might have been a mistake, but we'll just run with that. Um, and we can write this out, right? We get the, uh, we have the, we're going to have the torque um, of the boat, no, the, the torque on the boat by the mast. Uh, plus the torque uh, of the force day. And that's going to be equal to zero. Okay, The torque on the boat by the mast is equal to R of the, we'll just put RBM across the force of BM plus um, R of the force day cross with the force of the force day. Right, trying to write this out as explicitly as possible, hopefully to make this a little more clear. Um, and we have RBM times FBM, oops, should have had, times sine of the angle between them, 
Um, and that angle here is going to be 90 degrees, obviously. So this whole thing here is going to be, if this theta is 90 degrees, this is going to be 1 plus r of the 4, which we know what that is going to be, times force of the 4 staff sine of the angle between those, which we called theta 1 in the previous problem. Oops, not sorry about that. Theta 1. And that's going to be equal to 0. Um, again, this has a mistake. <laughs> I, I need to be more careful and, and step this up, right? So we need to do our right-hand rule to make sure we know which of the directions these are going in. We need to do the, uh, make sure we redo it each time. So this force here, we take R cross F, right? R cross F, we get a torque out of the page. And for this one, we take R cross F, and it goes into the page. So um, again, this is things that torques counterclockwise are going into the page, or out of the page, rather. We usually count those as positive. So we'll count this as a positive quantity, and we'll put a negative sign here. They're going in opposite directions. We need to make sure we subtract them. <coughs> um, so, our, OK, so we get, um, this is, we can then plug in some numbers here, 4.88 meters times the force of BM uh, minus 7.62 meters times 1,000 newtons times sine, oops, sine of the angle between them, which is 60 degrees, and that's equal to zero. So we can solve all these down and get a force of BM, and um, I'm not really sure what that's going to be, but maybe I can plug that into my calculator quick and see if we can get a number, because <coughs> a lot of times it's useful to look and see if that number makes any sense at all. So let's see what we get here. We get 60. I get this to focus. 60 times sine. This is 0 0.866 times 1,000 times 7.62. And we're going to divide that. We add that to both sides, and we divide that by 4.88. 1,352. Whoa! Now that might seem like a really large force. Does that make sense? I mean, obviously that's extremely large compared to the force due to our uh, backstay. But let's see if that makes sense. Let's go back and look at our picture. <coughs> we had a force of 1,000 newtons that wasn't acting at, um, at 90 degrees here, but was acting at a, a lever arm of 7.62, right? A pretty considerable distance larger than 4.88 meters. And so if this was 1,000 newtons, would you expect this force to be greater than, less than, or equal to a thousand newtons based on what you know about the, the fact that the torques need to be equal to one another? Right? I would hope we would recognize that this needs to be larger than a thousand newtons. And in fact it is. When we calculate it out we get 1,352 newtons. Well, at least I hope that's the right number. Uh, so we can check and, and intuitively this actually makes sense. right? That seems like a good sizable number that we can calculate. And by Newton's third law we know that if this is the force on the boat by the mast that that has to be, um, that that's going to be uh, equal to the force on the mass by the boat. So hopefully I didn't make too many mistakes, and I hope this is useful.